Hey everyone, Techni here with a review of the Red Dragon H710 Helios gaming headset. And yes, I know the biggest question on your mind that you're going to be asking during this video or after this video, should I get the H510 or the 710 and what are the differences? And I will chime into that and give you my opinion at the end of this video as well. So in your box, you're going to get the headset and then your detachable microphone with the windscreen on it. All right, so you all know where we have to start, right? And that is gonna be comfort. And straight out the box, putting this guy on your head, it's pretty stinking comfortable. Very, very lightweight, coming in at right around 240 grams. And again, they're not really squeezed into your head. I wear glasses and they fit perfectly fine that way as well. You do have all pleather ear cushions. So yeah, your ears are gonna get quite sweaty. And these ear cushions are honestly quite small, but they're pretty cool. Again, pleather on the outside, and then on the inside, you do have that cloth. Just let a little bit of breathability in there, but again, with a kind of switch like that, we notice sometimes with it being a cloth on the outside, and then pleather on the inside to kind of hold on some of that base, you get a little bit more breathability, right? This is kind of opposite, so yes, your ears do sweat in there. They are comfortable, they are soft, but again, they are small. And as far as the headband right here, super duper plush end to end right here, super soft and very cozy on the top of your head. Now talking about that comfort and that lightweight where they just fit perfect on your head, the one stinker is this gigantic little dongle or little control box midway through your wire right here. I mean, it drops down, it's right before your lap whenever you're sitting at a desk right there, at least for me, you know, it'll depend on your height, but that box is kind of heavy. So I do feel it tugging down on my left ear cup a little bit. Again, it's not a drastic amount by any means, but I do notice it. So all in all, as far as comfort right here, I don't know if I can really give them a win. I mean, they're not bad, they're not uncomfortable. Let me put it that way. They're not uncomfortable, but again, they're not comfortable. The ear cushions are way too small, for me at least, they may be fine for you. As far as the tugging down on the box, that's quite annoying right there. I wish this was maybe just a little bit smaller. I, I don't know, something different with this right here. The biggest downfall for me, again, are those ear cushions being very small. When I put them on my head, they pinch the top of my ears and then the bottom just they don't work for me all right so let's go on and talk about the build real quick here as i just stated incredibly lightweight but with them being lightweight they don't feel like a piece of junk at all i mean i can twist these suckers out twist them up bend them out and i don't get a single bit worried about them you got those full metal arms like we see on hyperx headsets right over here but we do go into plastic brackets into the ear cup plastic bracket up here and then again your headband but i don't get a single bit worried twisting these guys up. The only thing I would watch out about are the plastic bracks on the side, constantly setting them down right there. You don't want one of those to break on you. As far as the cable on the Helios headset, it is permanently attached right here. You cannot remove it. It is a very, very thick, braided, heavy duty cable right there. So I don't really think you need to worry about it first off. And it does connect by USB right here. It is a gold plated USB A. And then again, you have your control box right midway in between that wire right there. Feels very solid, very clicky and pronounced right there, which we'll cover this more in the sound coming up. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the sound on the H710s right here. Number one where I'd like to start is where they're saying these can be used on. On their website right here, Red Dragon Zone, it states multiple platform headphones, works with PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. I contacted Red Dragon about this as well. They said they removed it. But let me just let you know, these do not work on Xbox One. So I tested these on all the platforms right there. Again, also attempted on Xbox One, but didn't work. So my main test was again, Nintendo Switch, PS4 and PC right there, connected straight up to USB. And the number one thing, the downfall for me, at least the set I have, I'm not sure if all of them are like this, but to get the control box to work right here, to get access to the 7.1 or the EQs or any controls on the box, I had to download the software. It's just kind of like, why? That's just crazy. And the software is just a pain to download anyway. So again, I didn't go straight to console from that. I was just on PC. So kind of take it that way. Again, with me plugging into PC, I had to download the software to get the box to work. Not sure if you have to on console. All right. So now that we got all the headache and we found out what platform it works on and how to get it working and everything, let's talk about this sound. Now this headset is using 50 millimeter drivers with a frequency range of 50 to 20,000. Kind of weird, right? Usually we see 20 to 20,000 in gaming headsets. 
or lower to higher. I've never really seen anything, you know, above the 20,000 in game in headsets. So that kind of threw me off at first, but it honestly works. It really does. You just get a very natural, crispy sound. You don't get real rumble or muddy sounds or anything like that. No, there's not much thumpy bass in there. You do get it, especially with gunshots, uh, heavy footsteps or grenades or anything like that. You do get that pronounced sound, but it's not real thumpy or rumbly or anything like that. It's just kind of a solid hit. And you still have your highs over there with nothing really taking it out. So again, that range, 50 to 20,000, took me by surprise. At first looking on the box, I said, this is gonna sound weird, you know what I mean? but it does work and it sounds good. Now going over to the box, again, once we got it working, using that 7.1, it is horrible, just like every other headset. I can't stand it. It just jacks that EQ and sounds horrible along with every other headset with 7.1 on it. Pretty cool, you have some preset EQs here. You got voice, bass, and all that stuff. Some of them sound decent. I like it with it off. It just sounds very nice and natural. And then of course you have your volume controls and then your mute and then your mic mute, right? down here. Now the one thing that really threw me off with this headset when testing it for sound on PlayStation 4 the volume wouldn't really get that loud. Again, with it cranked up on the headset and then also cranked up in the console, the volume still wouldn't get very loud and immersive. It was definitely louder than a 3.5 plugged right into the controller right there, but not much, which is pretty weird because usually when you run a USB headset into the PS4 rather than going 3.5 into the controller, you do get a little bit more punch in there. You get a little more of that immersive, loud sound, you know? But I didn't get that with this, which was pretty weird. On PC, yes, you did get that very loud volume and everything. You were able to crank it up. So again, that was kind of weird. That was the first experience with me having that on a PS4 running USB. So as far as sound, it's really hit or miss here. As far as using it on PC, I give it a win. Obviously, like I stated, it doesn't work on Xbox. On PS4, it's not that good. On Nintendo Switch, it sounds great. So again, it was really hit or miss, a first of a kind for me here. All right, so we are now using a microphone on a Red Dragon Helios H710 headset right here. And this microphone is about, I'd say an inch and a half from my mouth with the windscreen on, and it is picking up a ton of background noise. Do you guys hear that hum? I don't have anything really big running in my background. I got a PC running and then a ceiling fan on low but it sounds like it's picking up like a bassy hum if you hear it there. Let me be quiet for a second. So I'm not sure if you guys can hear that. It's just, I don't know where it's picking that up from. Again, I don't, unless it's radiating a sound from my PC and just enhancing it a whole bunch right here. So again, this microphone, not the best. All right, so that was a microphone right there. Not that good. All right, so before I give you my conclusion on the H710s here, I wanna chime in about the H510s. And if y'all haven't seen my review on that, I'll plug it right at the end of this one, and you can see that one right there if you wanna get a little more detailed look into it. Now, as far as the H710 to the H510, now I don't have my 510s right here, so I can't really bust them out. I show you comparisons, but I can tell you a couple differences. Number one, on the 510s, the cable is detachable. The other big thing, the 510s you can plug in 3.5 or USB. Talking about them being 3.5, you can use them on any platform, whether it be any mobile phone, Xbox controller, or anything, again, with a 3.5. Now, the other biggest thing I noticed, again, about the 710 to the 510s right there, are the ear cushions. The ear cushions on the 510s are incredibly cozy, very big, thick, and plush, and again, super jumbo. They fit in my complete ear right there. They were almost perfect. Now, they both did have inline controls right here, and even with the H510s, the inline controls did not work on certain platforms. Again, check out that video to see exactly which ones don't work. So again, kind of the same across both of them. And that pretty much rolls me right into my conclusion with the Red Dragon H510 Helios headset, right? here it's almost like man we went from perfection with the 510s i mean i recommended that video that headset in two different videos i recommend it all the time in the comments to this day fantastic headset absolute bang for the buck and i thought this would be an upgrade number one coming in at 69 bucks 
The 510 is coming in around 55 bucks. I thought this would be the upgrade, being the newer one, more expensive, but it's not. It just feels like we cut corners right here, right? The small ear pads, the goofy inline controls where I needed that soft right there. The mic is horrible. The mic on the 510s was, oh, mama mia, that thing was perfect. So again, I mean, I don't mean to be bashing this product right here, but I just don't understand how we went from this and the 510s being absolutely amazing bang for the buck headset to this. I just, I personally don't understand it. And I honestly do not recommend this. Yes, I do. Like I stated before, I recommend the heck out of the 510. If you're looking for a budget headset around that $50 price range, definitely check out the 510 again. I'll plug it right here. That is a fantastic headset. But hey, thank you so much for stopping by and watching this review right here. I hope I was able to help you out if you're looking into this headset and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for some future tech videos. Hey, I hope I catch you in the next one. Bye now.